All right. Hey everybody, my name is Andy Wheelock. With me is Melanie Kitchen. Uh, we have been, are the TIFF coordinators at Erie Wamboses. And uh, for those of you uh, who are not familiar with us, uh, feel free to reach out to us. But uh, this is our first annual TIFF summit. And we kind of got the idea when we went to the Canada Connect conference, which is a really awesome conference in Niagara Falls. And it's just a great way to share, uh, you know, great ideas from across the border as well as just across the miles with us. So our second presentation for today is by, uh, for the Western New York folks may know him as Michael Drazek. And Mike is a district technology integrator as a TOSA for Lakeshore Central School District in Angola, New York. He was a 10 year math teacher, mathematics teacher, and six years as his role as a tech integrator. He's also a Google certified innovator and a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert. So he knows both platforms. <laughs> uh, to connect with Mike, uh, definitely if you do not follow Mike on Twitter, you must. He is one of those people that you must follow. And his Twitter handle is M underscore Drez. So M underscore Drez. And go to his website at michaeldrezek.com to get uh, his information. So with that, Mike, thank you for joining us. Well, thanks so much, Melanie and Andy. Uh, appreciate the intro and uh, happy to be here. Uh, it was a fantastic first session with Derek. So if you didn't get a chance to catch that, be sure to head to the TIFF Summit website um, and catch the replay if, uh, if that gets archived there. If, if it's not getting archived there, uh, you missed a good one. So uh, in any case, um, I plan to share for you know about 30 minutes. It might take a little bit longer. And then maybe if we want to kick over to some Q and A, some informal discussion based on what you see and hear and maybe learn here today. Uh, that that's the game plan. So I'm going to start by uh, sharing my screen here. Um, can everybody see that? I'm going to go with yes, because it looks like I'm sharing my Chrome and um, I think we're good. So. Um, so this is a little bit of background on me. You may have uh, heard through the intro. I'm a tech integrator, uh, teacher on special assignment at Lakeshore CSD. I uh, work throughout K-12 supporting three elementary buildings, K-5, a middle school, six through eight, and high school, nine through 12. I'm on Twitter uh, at the handle shown, and uh, I blog at michaeldresic.com. And uh, yeah, so the title of uh, my session here today that I wanted to go over was really, you know, I, I thought about like, you know, what could I share that would bring some value to people here? And I didn't have that one thing. Uh, it's it's kind of what I do. I dabble in a lot of things and hope that I stumble on something good. So, you know, where do we go from here? Kind of thinking about where we're at, where we've been, and uh, what or who do we bring uh, along for the ride? Um, it should be an interesting ride ahead. Uh, the slides for this session can be found at um, bit.ly slash TIFF Summit Drez. Um, so if you're interested in any of these, uh, all of the resources will be shared here. Um, so I just, you know, stuck some post-it notes here on, you know, what some of the things that we've learned. We've learned a lot, couldn't possibly fit it all on one slide, but um, really to share that, um, you know, this has brought about some challenges. We talked about it in the last session. Um, and throughout this, there's some kids that are thriving in this environment as much as we may be frustrated with it as educators at times. Um, but there's also some uh, that are not. So, you know, what does this look like? Uh, this is a love-hate experience for many. Um, it is for myself as I'm isolated in my patio, giving you this presentation to try to find a quiet space in my home with a four-year-old and a seven-year-old and a wife who's also an educator, I'm um, trying to balance it all. Um, one of the things that we've heard from parents, students, teachers, uh, more so from parents and students is that they really need streamlined communication. Um, there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of notification, there's a lot of overwhelm, um, and that's something that we'll need to focus on uh, moving forward, uh, in session, hybrid, remote, whatever that is. Um, also, uh, the, and, and you'll get this throughout the presentation today, that that we, um, and that students, teachers, admin, and parents, uh, everybody, um, cannot do this alone. So, uh, you, and again, you'll see that through this presentation. Also, uh, 
you know, I put in here that we'll, we'll likely need more counselors and mental health supports after this. You know, if our kids are struggling, if our educators are struggling, um, what does that look like in a time where you hear in the headlines that um, funding may be scarce or may get cut? Um, you know, we're, we're hoping that the, the right uh, allotment of funds to the right spaces is there. And that also includes technology. Um, you, you've seen a lot of it around access and equity um, and how the digital divide through this may have widened um, for those many, many kids that just can't connect remotely, not only in the United States, but around the world. Also, um, more than ever, accessibility matters. It's always mattered, but I think this has highlighted uh, the need for accessibility as well as quality technology integration. Uh, many teachers were thrown into this with hours to a day or two to plan. Um, many felt rushed and, um, you know, I, the, the silver lining in this is a tech integrator is that teachers were forced to learn some things they may not have otherwise. So I'm hoping that coming out of this, uh, that the right questions get asked um, in terms of learning with technology and teaching with technology. So, all right, the destination, where do we go from here? I don't know about you, but this is how I would like to get to the destination. I would love to have this, you know, quick nonstop flight, um, take a nap, wake up and arrive in my destination. We all know, uh, and, and surprisingly, this background is a very nice socially distanced airplane um, in the Buncey backgrounds, but we all know what it'll actually take to get to our destination from here is going to be an interesting one. So the gears are spinning. Everybody's got an opinion. Uh, you know, where do we go from here? I know the only place we can go from here is up. Um, and that's the mindset that I'd like to take. Um, but what are you bringing? Uh, and also, who are you bringing? Were two of the things that I wanted to highlight on this. So I wanted to talk a little bit about today about what I'm bringing, uh, why I'm bringing that, and then maybe hear from everybody participating today in terms of uh, what they are bringing. Um, so I'll have an opportunity for some collaborative uh, space for that uh, with some tech. All right, so um, all about my school, and it's just like a big giant question mark right now, right? What is, you know, who will be in there? Uh, what does it look like? Where will school be held? Why are we doing this schooling thing? It's probably the, the most important question is why, all right? What is school and, and how are we gonna do it? So uh, with all of these unknowns, I really wanted to share uh, this fantastic resource with you. Um, and, you know, this is me. I don't know about everybody else, but I'm kind of just curious to see uh, what everybody else is doing. Um, I'm not going to, you know, uh, be ashamed to pull the old Mr. Bean here from this episode and see what other schools are planning um, and, and what I might be able to apply uh, in my own school or in my own practice. So uh, before I can get into the nitty gritty of the actual teaching and the learning, um, we got to look into the infrastructure and what it will look like. Um, I have to share this. Um, this is just an amazing resource. So the American School of Japan, um, with permission from Warren Apple, and there's a Twitter handle there. There is, and in both of these, he encouraged uh, educators to look at, to share, to check out. These are uh, Creative Commons license. So share them with your administrators, um, you know, look through them, see if there's a nugget of information. I know there's a lot of surveys going around about what this looks like, uh, but there is a roadmap to reopening here. And when I open that up, and again, it's linked in the um, presentation, but it is um, really, really impressive for the, the different types of learning models and health and safety and activities. And it's really neat to get a global perspective on this. So, um, you know, they have from, from, from low risk to medium risk to high risk uh, scenarios. In addition to that, uh, they also have this, uh, and I just realized it's about learning wrong on that slide. Um, uh, fantastic learning plan uh, for what this looks like um, in distance learning. And I know we kind of went into this um, without a plan. Uh, I've heard the analogy that we were building the plane as we were flying it. Um, and I'd like to, you know, believe that when you uh, know better, you do better. So uh, we, now that we have this experience, um, what do we know and what can we do better? So, um, you know, again, I just had to link these here because I thought it was neat to get a global perspective as much as I'd like to know 
what the school up the road for me is doing. And I know that's, you know, where the superintendents are planning. I'd also like to know what the schools in other countries are doing and, and how are they defining things moving forward? So um, check out those plans um, for the global perspective of what a reopening might look like and what a solid distance learning plan could entail. Um, so one of the things that I learned through this uh, really was, uh, in, in my opinion, to, to double down on accessibility. Now, I thought that, oh, there we go. Um, in accessibility, uh, you know, looking at the, the big two in education, G Suite and Microsoft, um, you know, for when you're forcing uh, technology on all of these students, because it's the only way, um, there are some amazing tools out there to make uh, learning I guess possible for every single learner. So I linked here um, in this G Suite um, slide or, or link, basically the guardian's guide to tools for children with disabilities during distance learning. Uh, it's a fantastic resource. Um, it's it's basically goes through low vision, blind, deaf or hard of hearing, limited motor skills, um, children with dyslexia, and essentially this table of contents here that will uh, even you know, give you an overview of all of the Chromebook accessibility settings. So if you're a Google school, that guide can be incredibly helpful. Uh, if you're a Microsoft school, uh, Microsoft's learning tools through Office 365 um, in this educator center space uh, is just an absolute wealth of information on every single thing for students and parents. And then when you look, it kind of brings it down to mobility, vision, uh, speech language pathologists, uh, hearing, I mean, you, you name it, uh, even the mental health resources like we talked about before. So uh, how do we be inclusive uh, and how do we pay attention to accessibility? So I wanted to share that resource there, um, as well as there's a Sway linked here with tons of resources. Also, in uh, doubling down on accessibility, I did pull that graphic from the Microsoft site because I thought it was fantastic to show, um, you know, the different branches of this really to make sure that we're not leaving anybody behind. So we know that through access to tech, we're leaving people behind because they can't get connected. But what if they, if they can get connected, how are we making sure that they still have the level playing field? Um, and I also linked to uh, Apple Education. I know our district is a hybrid of Chromebooks and Windows 10 Dells and iPads. Um, just to, to really check, take a look and learn all of the accessibility features inside of even the Apple products and the iPad. So, um, you know, I know with a first grader at home, the voice, he's not a strong at keyboarding and I know he needs to practice, but, um, you know, his, the ability to use voice typing uh, or speech to text really help uh, for him to be able to save time with his learning. So also, uh, and doubling down on accessibility, th this, these are just a few must follows. So when I talk about what will I bring and who will I bring, every single one of the those here listed on the slide, and I, it's just taken a minute to load in. I'm not sure why it hangs up here. Here we go. Um, inside of the Beluga platform, there's a phenomenal webinar here. Um, if you look at the mask that Mary Alice Curran here is wearing, it's got that clear face shield over the mouth, you know, paying attention to students that are hard of hearing. Also, the social emotional aspect of learning in a school. Um, you know, I, I, there's talk of that teachers and students will all be need, needing to wear masks when we return. Um, you know, how important is it to maybe see someone's mouth, to see someone smile, um, to have that feeling of, of really of belonging, of well-being. Um, the things that Deaf Kids Code are doing are phenomenal. Um, the, the things that David Pollard in Ireland is creating um, in his makerspace is, is phenomenal. Joy Schwartz, another amazing educator, is the one who actually crafted that mask. And then uh, a student who uses all of these accessibility tools, um, you can hear from her in this webinar about what inclusive learning can look like. Um, and that was in partnership with the Digit Institute uh, and Beluga. I apologize, I am out on the patio and it, it's garbage day. So if you hear garbage trucks banging around in the background, uh, hopefully that won't stick around too much longer. Um, so what am I bringing? So um, I'm bringing a bunch of stuff. If I had my, uh, digital backpack here. Um, I am bringing coffee, as you can see here, uh, lots of it, as I have here with me right now. Uh, this has definitely gotten me through a lot of the late nights and the early mornings. I am bringing my Chromebook. I am bringing my um, iPad. 
And the reason why I'm bringing the iPad is in connection to this light bulb down below, which is AR, VR, and EDU. Lots of opportunities for augmented reality um, with the AR kit on an iPad. Um, so, you know, if, if your school has access to those iPads, I encourage you to um, put those to use in that way. Um, and then that website, the AR and v, AR, VR and edu .com is, a, is a phenomenal resource. I'm also bringing my Microsoft uh, Surface. I know Andy in the intro mentioned uh, that I'm a fan of Google and Microsoft tools. Uh, I wish that, I know while we're a G Suite school, uh, we like to take advantage of some of the amazing things that Microsoft offers as well. Um, I'm also bringing books with me. Uh, some, there's some really phenomenal educational books out there. Uh, the book that I'm reading right now is uh, Tech Like a Pirate by Matt Miller. Uh, it's really, really good book. Uh, I would highly recommend that one. If you know me, uh, I bring in Twitter with me because uh, in addition to the what, that also leads me to the people and the people also lead me to the ideas. And then I can pull my Mr. Bean and beg, borrow and steal those ideas, remix them uh, and meet the needs of our learners. Uh, I am doubling down on uh, digital citizenship as always. Um, you know, I have digital kids here. Uh, they do some phenomenal work. Um, so I'm also bringing, and I know Derek mentioned it in his presentation just before this, uh, the UN Global Goals, um, you know, in everything we need to make this world a better place from, um, you know, looking at hunger and looking at poverty and looking at quality education and looking at uh, clean water and looking at, at life below water and life on land and, uh, and peace and infrastructure and uh, clean energy and, and gender equality and all of that. Um, you know, I, I find that these UN development or UN sustainable development goals really tie back into every subject and it really helps make that learning authentic. Um, I wish I knew about them when I was teaching math. I know these were released in 2015 uh, when I was teaching math up until 2014. Um, I would have loved to have these to bring back into the classroom. Um, I'm bringing EdCamps with me, uh, the EdCamp style learning. There's an EdCamp coming up called EdCamp Quarantine um, that they're having free tickets to. It's all going to be done virtually. Um, search out virtual EdCamps. Um, I know the in-person gatherings are um, certainly on the decline, uh, but you know, just like we're meeting here in this virtual space, there's a lot there. Um, <clears throat> also, I am bringing with me podcasts. Uh, I had, you know, this is one of my favorite ones from On Education from Mike Washburn and Glenn Irvin. And um, I just encourage you to find a, pod, a new podcast to listen to, add it to your playlist. If you're cutting lawn or you're on a drive somewhere or on a run, uh, well, maybe not on a run. I know you might need some more, more uplifting music <laughs> than what the pod, educational podcast may bring. Uh, but there's some good conversations happening in that space. Uh, I'm also bringing with me uh, Global Maker Day. I think you know making is is so important um, to creativity, imagination, um, to STEM. So uh, that takes place every October. Not sure what it will look like for October of 2020, um, but it's been um, it's been great. I'm, I'm bringing community with me. Uh, my the NiceGate community is always sharing great ideas. There's webinars, um, you know, whatever that community looks like for you. Um, you know, I encourage you to to join uh, whatever's going on in your region. Um, you know, no, NiceGate has been a huge one for me. Uh, it's New York's branch of ISTE. And also, um, I, I know you, you may have seen the commercials, but, um, you know, mindfulness, headspace for educators, just a chance to, you know, I look at the slide, right? You look at how cluttered the slide is, and it's like everything you shouldn't do in a presentation, but I'm, uh, Andy Wheelock taught me to be a, a, an ed tech rebel. I don't know if this is what he meant, but, um, uh, you know, taking time to declutter your mind, um, to step back from it all and uh, refresh yourself. So I know in the summer for a lot of people that might um, mean just, you know, shutting on the computer, getting outside um, and doing some things for yourselves. But I thought the Headspace app is a really great way or the website um, for um, teachers uh, to, to use tech uh, to practice some mindfulness. And, and, and that's certainly something you could even bring into your classroom and use some of those exercises with your students as well. Um, you know, because it's, it's a lot of the articles that I've seen is how they were struggling um, with the various things. So, again, another hodgepodge of the what I'm bringing. Uh, the hashtag DigSit Commit um, is ISTE's pledge to digital citizenship. I'm bringing that. Um, I made this entire presentation on Buncee. It's one of my favorite creativity tools. Um, there's an ideas lab there with some amazing um, templates that you can apply to your classroom. There's a, it's a freemium model. There is a free version that you can use, and you can create so many Bunsies for free. You still have access to a lot of those neat features. Uh, Wakelet, just an amazing tool for curation. 
Um, there's also a student ambassador program. Uh, you know, when we're looking at student agency and student empowerment, um, ways to recognize that work or recognize that student voice, um, check out the Wakelet student ambassador program. I use the Wakelet Chrome extension. Um, so if I click on the W on my toolbar, uh, basically I can then add this to any of my Wakelet collections, which are also collaborative. Um, Seesaw activities and Seesaw Learning Journal has been absolutely huge for our students. It's been a great way for them to um, you know, keep the parent communication going. And, um, you know, I don't need my first grader at home who's in another district from where I teach. Um, it's been a really neat way for him to hear his teachers' voices, to see their faces, um, and to share his learning. Um, Beluga is another one. I referenced the webinar that they had on inclusion and accessibility. Um, their phrase is learn about the world with the world. Uh, the amount of content in there that keeps on growing is phenomenal. They have their own video conferencing platform that's web based that's built right into the space. So similar to Google Meet and Microsoft Teams, um, you can now use a lot of uh, those types of tools right inside of Beluga. Uh, but it's really a great way for your students to learn with other students and bring in global collaboration. Uh, I don't know if I have any Adobe fans out there. Um, keep an eye on the Adobe Education Exchange. Uh, they're about to announce a big launch here for some creative creative tools um, and, and the creativity founding crew in June. Uh, there'll be some lesson ideas there. Um, you know, check it out. I, I know I use Adobe Spark video a lot and Spark page and Spark post, um, but there's a lot of other things there like Adobe Rush and um, and Illustrator and Photoshop. And I know some of those things come at a cost, but there's also some really neat um, free tools. Uh, speaking about uh, collaborating globally, I know I touched on Beluga, um, connecting uh, with classrooms around the globe via Skype. Uh, the Skype classroom page is just an amazing space to um, have virtual field trips. Um, and uh, sorry, Derek, I saw a post pop up and then I lost the comment there. Um, I'm not sure if these are are loading in for you or not. Let me load back. Um, I don't know if you can see those icons or not. Um, but Skype Classroom is, is great. And if you're, uh, they also have this new Ask an MIE program where you can book uh, like a 30 minute time slot with a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert and have like a one-on-one -on -one or a small group session with them. Uh, their educators kind of like donating their time back to share some ideas, kind of like what we're doing right now. Uh, Minecraft Education Edition. Um, has been awesome. Our Minecraft club has been able to connect remotely, which is pretty cool for our students. Um, you know, giving them a space to build, a space to connect and collaborate. Um, even seeing my own seven-year-old son, I was able to teach him how to do some of these things, and he was able to connect with a few of his friends on that platform, which as a, as a parent was, it brought me joy to see some of the things that he was teaching himself inside of that space. Um, Co-spaces EDU is one of my favorites. Uh, you could build spaces and then experience them in virtual reality or augmented reality. It also integrates with the Merge Cube. If you've ever used um, the Merge EDU uh, Merge Cube bef uh, before, it's a really neat way to have some augmented reality in the palm of your hands. Another one that I'm bringing with me is Google Earth. The new um, project builder is a really neat way um, to basically create your own virtual tours. You can also add material, you can add links, you can add YouTube videos, and you can really build your own virtual uh, field trips. I know Google Expeditions, uh, is, is a great resource, uh, but uh, Google Earth is essentially letting you create your own expeditions, which is pretty powerful. Um, I'm bringing the ISTE standards. M mainly, I focus on the ISTE standards for students. Um, I try to pay attention to the educator standards as well, but really focusing on those student standards like um, digital citizenship, global collaboration, uh, knowledge constructor, um, you know, creative communicator, things like that. Um, you know, I feel like if we're hitting on those ISSI standards when we're building our lessons, uh, we're definitely heading in the right direction. I know Derek uh, did his uh, last presentation all in Nearpod, and it was very interactive. Uh, the fact that it integrates now with vocabulary when they acquired vocabulary is really neat to learn through music. Um, the asynchronous learning through Flipgrid has been huge. Um, they now have new fonts and labels um, that you can use. Um, there's a new video editor. Uh, Flipgrid Live is happening on June 29th, I believe. Uh, you can register for that. It's free. They're going to be a whole new bunch of updates. Um, I, as a tech integrator, uh, essentially created a grid uh, with all of the topics uh, of tutorials that I'd like our Lakeshore teachers uh, to be able to reference. I partnered up with our other tech integrator, Deanne Polian, and we'll record our videos right there in Flipgrid because they have a new screen recording tool. So uh, you click the three dots, you click screen recording. I even created a little intro clip in WeVideo, uploaded it into Flipgrid, 
and now I have um, everything in one hub. Uh, so I know for a lot of teachers do this remote learning experience. I've never used Flipgrid before, and now they discovered it for uh, the first time, and they're like, "Wow, this is really neat," and it's simple. So I think that's important too for teachers. Uh, Empatico is another one. Um, you know, bringing empathy into the classroom. I always feel like if we're leading with empathy, uh, we are also um, you know, doing it right. I know it's a big part of the design thinking process. Um, you know, the, we, we were connected with a, uh, deaf classroom, uh, our class for the hard of hearing, um, in South Carolina and that experience, uh, that was really facilitated by Empatico fully free. It's, uh, funded by the kind foundation, free to classrooms. Um, uh, it changed a lot of our students. It, uh, changed their perceptions. It, um, you know, made them think about the world around them. I know they were fifth graders. Um, you know, but it, it really, really welcomed good conversations around perspective taking. Um, there's lesson plans built in there. So I encourage you to check out Empatico. Um, and the, the last one I have on here is Participate. Uh, it's a really neat space for um, just different communities. I know one of the ones that I just got into was this game based learning community. Uh, Mike Washburn, it looks like he is the admin on here. Uh, there's, um, you know, study groups. There is spaces to learn about core games and how you can build uh, an Unreal Engine. They stream just about every day at like 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. on Twitch. Um, there's a new series called Unscripted where you can learn some coding. Um, but I just thought what a neat way to um, have a community to go to. So when we talk about what to bring, this is one of those what's that leads you to the who of the people uh, that will help you connect. And, and the, the one that I missed down here in the bottom was uh, Go Bubble, Kids Save Social Media. Um, I would say now more than ever, our kids have had time. Uh, they spent a lot of time on social media before. Um, I know my screen time is up during this time, and I'm sure theirs is as well. Uh, but this has a lot of AI running in the background to keep kids safe. Um, it's filtering out certain thousands and thousands of words. Um, it's, it's filtering out any inappropriate photos. It's vetting all of the contacts. It's meant for students, um, for teachers, for schools, um, just really something that I think is going to be on the up and up um, in terms of, you know, I think of it like social media with training wheels. The kids are going to be online. Uh, they're going to be in those spaces and and how we help them through that space. It kind of goes along with that did sit commit over there. Um, so go bubble is another free tool and it will always be free. Um, it was actually started by a police sergeant. And I like that, um, you know, that the law enforcement is finding a way to leverage the education space and not, not just, uh, you know, out of fear, um, but to really teach kids uh, a safer, kinder, and healthier uh, social media experience. So, uh, who to bring on this journey? Um, I'm bringing the MIE expert community. I encourage you to head over to the MIE uh, if you're even if you're not a Microsoft school. Um, there's some awesome courses in there on a lot of um, really neat, you know, like 21st century uh, design. Um, and lesson design. So, you know, things like that that are could apply to anybody, regardless of whether you're a Google school or a Microsoft school uh, or an Apple school. Um, I linked here to the Ask an MIE. If you'd ever like to book a time beyond this, you just click on that link and I can certainly uh, meet with you one on one. Um, also, I'm obviously bringing, uh, well, the Google community, um, there's uh, Google educator groups all over the place. They're on Facebook. Um, if you're on, if you're in that space, um, you know, find a, a way to connect with the community of teachers that are using the same products as you. Also, obviously, uh, the Lakeshore Central School District is where I work. Um, you know, I wouldn't be able to do anything without them. Uh, so really lean on those people in your district uh, that can help you. And one of my favorite spaces lately to connect uh, and learn from kids is at Global Ed SS Chat. Uh, you can see uh, these are awesome students. I know this is the uh, Canada and New York summit. Uh, these are five amazing Canadian students, all from the Southern Ontario region. Aaron's a university student. Um, Darcy's heading off to university next year. Um, Sam is our resident tech guru. Um, this guy has created a, uh, a Twitter bot to engage. He runs all the tech behind the scenes. Essentially, this is just a student led Twitter chat. They select the topics. There's a tweet and talk once a month. It's on hiatus until September uh, with the summer break. Um, the student leadership team is expanding. If you have any students that you think in your school district that would be interested in doing something like this or um, you know, bringing that digital leadership uh, to them, uh, let me know. Uh, we, you know. We have another student joining from Texas. 
this year. So it used to be called Ontario Ed Student Chat, and now it's, it's made that shift to a global EDU student chat because um, we really like to expand. Uh, there's a, an expert on panel uh, as well, talking with the kids, uh, but the kids run the panel discussion and um, holy cow, have I ever learned a lot from them. There are some amazing kids and these kids are in all of our classrooms. They're in all of our schools if we just give them a voice. So Jennifer Cassatod and Lee Castle uh, also help head that up. So if you're if you are connected with them, you can also reach out to them if you have students that might be interested. Um, so what to bring, who to bring, right? We know we're better together. There's probably, there's just, you know, the smartest person in the room is the room. And here we are. Uh, I've been doing a lot of talking. Uh, basically this bit.ly uh, backslash tip summit 2020 will take you to a uh, Jamboard. I'd be curious to know what are you bringing? Who are you bringing? So that would take you to this Jamboard, and if you've if you've ever used Jamboard before, there's an inking tool where you can write. Um, there is also uh, you can add an image. You can just search an image, but this sticky note right here, uh, you can pick any color of these sticky notes, and you can just type this in. I am bringing the TIFF Summit um, sessions with me, for example, because I know that they'll teach me a lot. So you could go ahead and stick a uh, sticky note on there. You can drag it anywhere on the page. Um, I'd be curious to hear from other people. What are some things along this journey that are your your non-negotiables, your go-to? Um, I'm not sure if I have access to the chat, but it looks like people are making their way in here. Um, I did add the link into the chat, uh, but actually Andy's is actually linked. <laughs> And I know Derek did something similar with a Nearpod Collaborate where we kind of like crowdsource some ideas and information. Um, you know, I know I threw a lot out there and, um, you know, sometimes less is more, you know, to find that one you can lean on. I know, you know, I didn't have that chance to go around and see who was here and uh, where they were from. So apologies um, in advance, but maybe if we finish a little bit earlier, we could even add that. Or even if you'd like to add that here, you're you know, more than welcome to add your name. Um, I'm thinking maybe as some of the same people that were with us in the pri prior session. I don't know if I have to refresh in order to see it or if it just pops up automatically or this is the time in our regular Western New York TIFF where we try something and uh, if it doesn't work out, we, we have a phrase and run. I shut it down and duck out and uh, pretend like it never happened. Uh, <laughs> but I could come back to that. You're more than welcome uh, to add to that there. Um, that's really, you know, like I know I had uh, 45 minutes. I've got 10 minutes to spare here. Um, it's kind of what I was thinking along the lines of just throwing some resources out there, some thoughts, uh, my reflections. Um, you know, if you are, I got to back out. I don't know why it's not loading all the way. Here we go. Uh, there's the link again for the the summit site. Um, tomorrow, Nina Calarco and Dan Armstrong are presenting at 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. respectively. Uh, looks like uh, Aaron Quinn uh, on day three and Tara Vanderturn um, and Amy Bloom again at one o'clock and two o'clock Eastern time. Then on day four, Mary Howard and Rob Dunlop um, at 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern time. And then on Friday, uh, there will be a kind of a roundtable panel session with everybody here, uh, moderated by uh, Melanie and Kyle Kitchen. So if you haven't signed up for any of those sessions, uh, head over to that site and, and do that. Uh, I know in the remaining time that we have, I could uh, unmute the mic and um, let's see here. I see uh, Blended Learning, Caitlin Tucker. I know she is uh, probably the Blended Learning, one of the gurus out there. Um, so check her website out. Thank you for that link. Uh, Nearpod, Padlet, Edpuzzle. Um, and, yeah, and the kids. Nothing happens without them exactly, right? Um, they are they are the why. So. Hey, Mike, yeah. can you just re refresh what um, you're expecting for people to put in that? So they should be putting in what they use 
Uh, yeah, it could be anything like what you're bringing on the journey ahead, you know, like who you're connecting with, who you're collaborating with, uh, what tools are you using, um, you know, uh, really anything. Uh, your, your things that you your go to, um, you know, is it, is it a certain conversation? Is it something that you'd like to learn about? Um, it could really be anything. I'm sure as many online and virtual PD trainings and conferences this summer, um, you know, and, and, and with that, there's a lot being offered. Uh, taking advantage of any as I can. I know, uh, you know, I know a lot of teachers are exhausted from all of this, uh, the remote learning experiences where some people just, you know, like, I need to shut this computer down. But at the same time, I think learning all of these new things has uh, re-energized uh, some people uh, in terms of trying to learn more. They're like, holy cow, I had no idea this stuff was out there. Now I need to go learn more. And you go down that rabbit hole um, of, of really just thriving on learning and <laughs> more copy. Holy cow, yeah. Um, I don't know how long 100k cups is supposed to last, but I'm on batch two. I don't think it's been 100 days. I think it's been like 66 days. There it is. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, maybe stop sharing. And if any, I don't know if participants can participants talk. They can't, right? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Wait, let me go over. I'm unmuted, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kyle's laughing over here. I had to unmute. <laughs> Who's the culprit? Can we see? I cannot. Uh, Don't know. Yeah. All right. Who did it? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if any, I know in the chat. Um, so I know we have still have seven minutes to go, but if anyone has any questions or I know I didn't, you know, really demo anything. It was just kind of, uh, you know, an explosion of the the what and the who that I'm bringing along with me for the ride. So hopefully, maybe you learned of something new to check out. Um, I encourage you to try to hit up some of those sessions on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and the panel on Friday if if you're free. So, and uh, yeah, Melanie, you gave me a hard time. I think uh, yeah, Western New York tip, of course. The uh, the, 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 the I'm bringing them along. Uh, you know. They are the, they are the our peace. <laughs> hey, Mike. Let's put you on the spot here while you've got some time. What uh, what are you? What's your prediction for school for next year? What are you thinking it's going to look like? I'm going to um, um, turn my camera on. Yeah, I. Um... Oh, that's that's always a tough question, right? Because I mean, like, you know, I'm going to get this one wrong. There's no, there's no set answer. What do I think it's going to look like? I mean, I, it's I, a prediction. I see, I'm seeing. I mean, I, but it's it's interesting because I see I'm seeing like parent groups pop up from a teacher in Ohio that shared with us like they have full blown like parent Facebook groups that want five days of school open, no restriction. Like they are demanding um, that that you know they're done with this, so like they're just demanding school opens up. I think. Um, they'll keep following the data. I, I do believe that um, they'll have to make some types of modifications to schedule. I'm, I would imagine some type of like staggered, either staggered school day um, or staggered um, like schedule, like alternating days, potentially somehow like a hybrid of, of in-person and remote uh, learning, at least um, until there's some type of uh, vaccine or something that can help with this. Um, I don't know. That's that's my envision. I mean, like we are, we were always a K uh, three through twelve Google school. Uh, we're now making uh, the Google accounts K two for our students because we realize that, like, with outdated iPads, those students need uh, to get on a Chromebook to be able to access their CSA, to be able to access some of these tools uh, that the iPad and the technology that we distributed to them, uh, you know, was a little bit outdated because all they had access to was like an old iPad two, for example. So, um, you know, we talked about the access being really a, a, a a deal breaker for a lot of kids. Um, I don't I wonder what it's going to look like for me. I mean, as a tech integration specialist, I imagine now every single teacher knows how to uh, have a Google Meet. So I wonder, you know, if it's something little that I might be able to uh, work with the class. Like, will I, be, you know, do I beam into a class sometime and, and speak to a, a group of students um, as a tech integrator virtually? Um, it's, it's, there's a lot of, or I guess there's a lot of wonder um, and I know it makes some people anxious in terms of like not knowing. I know a lot of teachers that just like to know and they have everything mapped out. Um, but I know like a lot of the people that are here right now are probably the type of people that can roll with it and, um, you know, 
take a risk without, I don't know, too much. I don't think I answered the question, but that's what I. <laughs> it's just a prediction. Yeah. So. Um, I, I, I wonder what's going to happen. The sports fan in me, you know, what's going to happen with my Buffalo Bills season tickets? You know, I'm ever going to go into an arena or like a concert. You know, when, when does life finally get back to normal? So I think about stuff like that even outside of school. I don't know if anyone in the chat has any Great questions or um, um, yeah, thank you everyone. Um, no questions as of right now, just, um, you know, appreciation for sharing the information um, for the group, for the webinars. Definitely keep coming back everybody. Yeah, there's some great sessions up ahead. Um, some great speakers and some teachers doing some amazing things. So, uh, yeah, but thanks for having me. I don't know if I, I can hang out here. To, I know we had a 45 minute block, so <laughs> I could yeah. be here for a few minutes in case something pops up. Um, let's go down the rabbit hole of clicking on some of those links. If, if I mean, you could spend an hour in that uh, reopening a distance learning plan from the, the American school in Japan. That's uh, pretty pretty uh, expensive. All right, so I think, um, yep, lots of thank yous, great ideas. Well, thank you to everyone for attending. Thank you for your time today. We appreciate it. Um, and we will be here every day this week from one to three. Um, so if you have no other questions or conversation that you want to have right now, then we will be done. Um, Andy and I will hang out until everybody's gone just to make sure. Um, so enjoy your day. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Mike. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And Derek is still here. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. All right, good opening session. I'm going to stop that recording. <laughs>